Right now at noon, there's a new COVID-19 testing site in Madison. We'll tell you how you can get tested. And some members of the Coronavirus Task Force are in self-quarantine after cases of COVID turned up at the White House. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now on this Monday. Hope you all had a nice, safe weekend. A cool but sunny start to the week. Let's head to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Hattie McLean has a look at your first worn forecast. Hi, Hattie. Hi, Mark. We have a beautiful shot behind us showing blue sky and a little bit of cloud cover moving into Madison. What we're also seeing on that shot, though, in the on the lower end is that there are some green leaves finally showing up around the area. We should see more of those green colors as we go forward this week. Temperatures are expected to warm finally here in southern Wisconsin. Skies did clear early this morning, but now we're seeing some of those cumulus clouds pop up on the satellite map. They'll continue to move through the area today, but it'll just be partly sunny as we head towards the afternoon. Temperatures are climbing. We're back into the mid and upper 40s. Basketball's already at 50 degrees. We are headed into the low 50s today. Definitely warmer than it was yesterday. Coming up, we still have some cold temperatures at night, though. We'll talk about that frost potential and when you can maybe finally put those sheets away <laughs> and let the plants go outside. So no snow tonight. Oh, let's hope not. <laughs> like yesterday. Enough of that yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Hattie, we'll see you in a few minutes. Governor Evers is announcing that there are new community testing sites around the state. This is a live shot of the Department of Health Services of the Wisconsin National Guard will be supporting new sites in Madison and Milwaukee. This is the place in Madison. The testing site is at the Alliant Energy Center. It's drive-through testing only. It'll be open from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. Monday through Saturday. There is no appointment or pre-registration pre necessary. There's also two sites in Milwaukee, one on the north side and one on the south side. The Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation is giving an update on the state's small businesses. Missy Hughes, the secretary and CEO of WEDC, says Wisconsin small business, business owners have received about $10 billion. That's for about 74,000 small businesses in the state. She also said the state is offering reopening guidelines for agriculture, construction, gym and fitness centers, and hotels. They're still working on guidelines for manufacturing and outdoor recreation. We'll have more on this at Channel 3000. Com. There are more than 10,000 positive cases in Wisconsin now, including 401 deaths. Right now, 10,301 cases have been reported. 8% of new tests came back positive yesterday, 1% higher than the percentage of positive tests on Saturday. The governor's Badger Bounce Back plan requires a significant downward trend in the percentage of positive cases over 14 consecutive days before the state begins to reopen. DHS says just under half of the more than 10 10,000 people who have tested positive for the virus have recovered from their infections. Two people at the White House have now tested positive for the coronavirus, prompting some of the health experts on the coronavirus task force to go into self-quarantine. But not everyone who's come into contact with the individuals is staying out of the office. Vice President Mike Pence is back at the White House despite his press secretary, Katie Miller, testing positive for COVID-19 late last week. White House officials say the new cases do not step on the president's push for states to reopen. I don't think it changes the, the push to go back to work in any way. I think uh, we've been very consistent. The president's been very consistent. We want to open the economy in a clear and careful way, balancing the medical issues with the economic issues. Dr. Anthony Fauci, CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield, and FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn are in some form of self-quarantine and will testify before the Senate remotely tomorrow. A video of a youth travel baseball organization out of Appleton has gone viral. It shows police officers breaking up a team practice out on a practice field. Officers say the group was violating Governor Evers' safer at home order. A neighbor captured video of the team while out for a walk Thursday afternoon. The head coach on the team says he owns the field and should be allowed to hold practice, but he has no issue with what the Appleton police did. The future of college sports this fall remains uncertain. NCAA President Mark Emmert says the coronavirus is making it unlikely all schools will be ready to begin competing in college sports at the same time. Emmert says the goal is for every team to have an equal amount of preparation time before its season starts. But there could be some competitive inequities caused by schools having varied timelines for reopening campuses. Emmert also said there can be no college athletes competing at schools if students are not on campus.
The 115th Fighter Wing of the Wisconsin Air National Guard will conduct evening training flights starting tonight. While training flights typically happen during the daytime, a news release said crews are required to conduct nighttime training to ensure their overall readiness. Residents may see or hear F-16 fighter jets taking off or landing around 10 p.m. Officials said pilots will follow flight paths that are meant to minimize the amount of noise that area residents will have to deal with. Comedian Jerry Stiller has died at the age of 92. His son Ben Stiller said the actor died of natural causes in a tweet posted early this morning. Jerry Stiller began his career in the 1950s with his wife Ann Mira and remained popular decades later with his featured roles on Seinfeld, Seinfeld and King of Queens. Stiller was a multi-talented performer who appeared in an assortment of movies. He played Walter Matthau's police sidekick in the thriller The Taking of Pelham 123 and Divine's husband Wilbert Turnblatt in John Waters' twisted comedy Hairspray. 92 years old. Well, there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. How do you like your brownies? Fudgy or cake-like? Either way, we have one that is blue ribbon worthy. Hi, I'm Travis Ganser. Looking to update your bath, shower, or your entire bathroom? Ganser is the answer with Bath Creations by Ganser Company. Schedule your free in-home consultation or visit our beautiful showroom on the Beltline. A local family-owned business of four generations. Coming together through tough times is a Wisconsin tradition. In fact, adversity seems to bring out the best in us. Edvest is no different. During these times, our dedication to your higher education goals remains as strong as ever. Oh my gosh. Wow. Who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. And what I love about Plexiderm is this is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It literally creates an invisible layer that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes, on your fine lines and wrinkles, and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical, I am not going to lie, because I saw people online with it, and I'm like, yeah, right, that can't pop possibly work. I'm telling you, it really works. I thought I might see a little difference, but to see that big of a difference, and you know, I felt something happening, but I had no idea. Like, I have so many dark circles, I have the puffiness, I have the lines. Like, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming, you have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. Take action with the Plexiderm 10 minute challenge. This Mother's Day, get up to 50% off the normal retail price. Plus get free shipping. Visit Plex Plexiderm.com or call the number on your screen. Hi, I'm Travis Ganser. Looking to update your bath, shower, or your entire bathroom? Ganser is the answer with Bath Creations by Ganser Company. Schedule your free in-home consultation or visit our beautiful showroom on the Beltline. A local family-owned business of four generations. When it comes to brownies, most people fall into one of two categories. They either want them cake-like or rich and fudgy. But what if I told you we came up with a brownie that has the best of both, plus it has the added benefit of crispy, crunchy edges, which takes them over the top. We start by melting some butter in a saucepan over medium heat. To that, we stir in some sugar, and once it dissolves, we take it off the heat and let it cool. We want it to cool slightly, so when we add our eggs, they won't cook in the hot mixture. A splash of vanilla goes in before we add our dry ingredients. You know, flour, cocoa powder, and a bit of salt. Once it's smooth, we stir in some chopped pecans and into a baking dish it goes. We'll pop this into the oven, and in about a half an hour, it's done. 
It probably won't be easy for you to wait until this cools, but once it does, it'll be worth the wait. And like I promised, it'll satisfy the most finicky, fudgy, or cake-like brownie lover. Maybe top it with some ice cream and dig in. The recipe for our blue ribbon brownies is online now, and it's one that you shouldn't pass up. Once you sink your teeth into these, you'll know why they're blue ribbon worthy. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fudgy cake-like way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, thank you. There's more to come on New Street now at noon. Up next, a sunny start to the week. Meteorologist Hattie McLean will have your first worn forecast right after the break. With Herzing University's Everywhere Classroom, you can earn a degree in today's hottest fields, anywhere, anytime. Take an online course free and get comfortable with online learning. I'm possible at Herzing. Learn more today. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to deal with your messy gutters anymore? Leave that nasty chore in the rear view mirror with a new LeafGuard gutter system. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. My team would love to show you how LeafGuard's patented design keeps leaves and debris out so you can give up cleaning your gutters forever. And now is the best time to get LeafGuard. Order now and get free installation labor, free financing for 12 months, and a $100 Visa gift card with your purchase. Call now to set up a free estimate. We're back. We got a to go food. Oh, good. What a treat after a long week and no cleanup. When you can't dine in, then get it to go and support our restaurants during Madison Magazine's Restaurant Week to Go. Two weeks of fabulous to go menus you'll love. Visit madisonmagazine.com for details and menus. Restaurant Week to Go, presented by Kesnix. Food service design, equipment, and supplies. I guess there is still cleanup to do. Now is the time to change your life. Herzing University makes it possible without leaving home. Start studying online and take the first step toward a new career. I'm possible at Herzing. Hi folks, slowly but surely our temperatures are getting back to normal. Hattie will have the latest in her first sworn forecast. And Wisconsin is getting ready to hold another election in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. We'll tell you how officials are preparing. See you at 4.30. Wisconsin weather can be frustrating. Get the latest forecast, alerts, and detailed traffic reports from the News 3 Now team on air, online, and download the Channel 3000 First Warn app. Be the first to know what's headed our way. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Well, let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials down 45 points. The NASDAQ, however, up 63. The S&P 500 up about four and a half. Farm Director Pam Yonke is here today with today's Ag News. Hi, Pam. Farmers are focused on this crazy weather that we've all been experiencing for the past, uh, what, 24 hours, soon to be 48. Hopefully that's the end of it. The frost freeze that hit a lot of our Channel 3 viewing area, not necessarily threatening so much our corn or our soybeans, but definitely a threat to things like our berries as well as our apples. Uh, Dave Wildes out in Cross Plains uh, with Appleberry Farm started on Friday monitoring what was happening with his uh, apple trees. He said they're just a little bit behind as far as uh, the growing season so far in southern Wisconsin, but they're getting to a real critical, what he called pink stage as far as the buds are concerned. And uh, if they get hit with a freeze for a prolonged period of time, that could be the end of his apple crop this year. So there's a lot of farmers on high alert. Like I said, uh, the most susceptible are our fruits and vegetables, but also things like potatoes, carrots, those kinds of things can also fall victim. So we're keeping an eye on the weather for sure. And uh, 
one unfortunate uh, situation because of COVID-19. Last week, the Sauk County Fair Association announced that they are not going to be having a fair this year. This is a conversation a lot of county fair boards are having, uh, trying to decide, will a crowd show up? Will we be able to provide entertainment? Sauk County Fair just decided there were too many things against them, so no Sauk County Fair this year. Jamie Butkey with the Wisconsin Fair Association said simple things like a carnival ride may not be so simple in 2020. She said a lot of the carnivals that travel the United States on into Canada may not be able to get on the road if too many county or state fairs cancel. So it's a developing story we'll keep an eye on. For more, come on over to MidwestFarmReport.com. Fabulous Farm Babe on Facebook as well as Twitter. That's a quick food update for you on a Monday. I'm Farm Director Pam Yankee. Stay safe. Thank you, Pam. Here's Hattie now with your forecast. Yeah, we have a great afternoon coming up here across southern Wisconsin. You can see some clouds in the area, but partly sunny skies and at least warmer temperatures than yesterday. Take a look at the temperature trend yesterday. During the afternoon at lunchtime, we were only in the mid-30s. We had some snow falling through the day. Temperatures really stayed in the 30s and low 40s for the entire day on Mother's Day. So one of the colder Mother's Days in recent memory. Here's a look at where we are right now. We're actually warmer than we were almost all day yesterday, 46 right now in Madison, 47 in the Dells, updating now 50 in Prairie du Chien and 50 in Boscobel. In the southern part of the state, Janesville's the same as Madison and Watertown at 46 degrees. Now here's a look at weather track. It is satellite and radar combined. We're seeing some cloud cover develop off to our north and west, mainly just fair while they're cumulus clouds. Nothing showing up on the radar map right now, and we're not expecting any showers as we go through the rest of the afternoon. Should be a pretty nice day. Here's a wider look at what's happening. We still are going to stick with this cold trend though. High pressure in control to our north. That's Canadian high pressure. So that really just keeps the cold air in place across the northern tier of the United States. But eventually as we go through the next 10 days, we're going to see a pattern shift uh, and things will start to change up. And you can definitely tell that here on the overnight low temperatures. Tonight and Tuesday night, we're still dropping into the 30s. Looking like some frost is likely, especially in those lower colder spots. So you'll need to protect the sensitive plants tonight and possibly even on Tuesday. After that, you see our nighttime low temperatures drop or jump back up to closer to normal levels, even a little bit above normal. So that is good news. Looks like maybe if you've been waiting or holding off to put plants outside Wednesday or Thursday, when temperatures start to warm, those will be your days. You can get those plants outside. Now, future track forecast is showing you again some cloud cover moving through. It's trying to develop a few showers here and there this afternoon, but I think most areas are going to stay dry, not accepting any of those showers to make it to the ground. Any clouds are going to clear this evening and temperatures will drop like a rock. So we are headed down to a low of 33 degrees here in Madison. Areas north of Madison, again, freezing possible in the Dells and Camp Douglas with lows dropping into the 20s. Your extended forecast is going to bring rain back into the area midweek, late Wednesday into Thursday. Here's Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can see some showers starting to move into the area. That rain continues on and off through the day on Thursday. We could see a couple of rounds of showers and even a few potential thunderstorms. Looks like it does clear out though for Friday. So a chance to water everything later this week and then nice temperatures. At least with this next storm system, Mark, we are talking all rain, no snow. Temperatures should be in the 60s and then 70s. And it looks like that pattern change is really going to change things up around here. We'll turn warm as we head into next week. All right, so we may have turned the corner. Uh, let's hope so. I think so, yeah. One more night. Yeah. All right, Hattie, thank you. Ahead on News for Now, a new Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is in on the phone and taking your plan and garden questions, the number to call 270-9933. We'll get to your calls right after this. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today.
Let's face it, dark stains and algae buildup can rapidly age a roof. But Mad City Roofing has the solution with our high performance premium roofing systems. We're Wisconsin's number one ranked remodeler. Get durable roofing with Scotchgard protection to prevent stains and streaks for long lasting beauty. Lots of colors and styles available and thousands of satisfied customers. And then we just wanted something we didn't have to worry about again. And we've seen this at Mad City or that. We thought, wow, that's the way to go. Plus, ask about durable metal roofing options for a lifetime of maintenance freedom. And now during our Raise the Roof event, 75% off labor. Ask about zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for 18 months. Call during this program and receive a free $100 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. Call 608-338-0590. That's 608-338-0590. Call now and ask about Mad City's Do More discount. Good for additional savings on new windows, baths, and showers, even kitchen updates. Mad City is ready to go to work for you. And remember, for a roofing that looks great and won't leak, we got you covered. From metal roofing that looks like traditional roofing to our high-performance premium roofing systems, they're impact resistant, stand up to high wind, and back with the Emerald Pro Lifetime Warranty. Call Mad City Roofing now to eliminate those roofing problems for good and now take advantage of our Raise the Roof event. 75% off labor. Ask about zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for 18 months. And if you call during this program, receive a free $100 Amazon gift card with your free in-home estimate. Call 608-338-0590. That's 608-338-0590. Welcome back. Lisa Briggs from the Bruce Company is on the phone taking your plant and garden questions. The number to call 270-9933. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Real good. Enjoyed the snow yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get to the phones. We'll start with Jennifer from Dane. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you today? Good. What's your question? I have a question about my 50-year-old peony bushes. Okay. The neighbor's trees have grown rather high and are blocking them from getting the full sun. And they really like that. I need to know how to transplant, retransplant them. Okay, so peonies to flower need uh, six hours of sun. They can take a little bit of shade, but not a ton. The best time to move them is in the fall, so early September, late August, early September. You can dig them up, just the whole block, and if they're 50 years old, they're probably pretty massive. And then just take a really sharp, flat-bladed shovel and slice it into pieces, quarters or whatever, and then replant them in a sunnier spot. Make sure that you don't plant them any deeper than they are right now. Peonies, if they're covered by more than an inch or two inches of soil from the little eyes, they will, um, they will not flower. The plants will flourish but not flower. So you can do that at the end of the summer. Okay. All right. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for calling. You're let's, welcome. Let's go to Donna in Loganville. Hi, Donna. Hi. Hi, which um, question? My, my question, thank you for call, answering. My question is I have a uh, Christmas cactus, uh, three of them, and two of them, the, the, they're done blooming, all three, and two of them, they're turning red, or, you know, kind of burgundy color. The one is still green. I've never had that before over all the years. Is there something I'm doing wrong, or is it missing something? Sometimes a little bit of um, temperature fluctuation can trigger that. Like, I know people who leave theirs outside late into the fall to really spur the flower bud. The flower bud production will sometimes get some weird coloration on them. Are they healthy otherwise? Like, you know, not wilting or anything like that? No, they they're, they look good other than that. Yeah, I would just make sure that the, you know, I would put them outside for the summer once it gets warm out in sort oh, of I've a morning sun that. location. <laughs> and just, you know, I would not too much fertilizer because they are a cactus. Watch the watering. Make sure you're not overwatering. 
But it, as long as they're healthy, that is not generally one of the signs that they're having some problems. All right, let's move on to Pat in Janesville. Hi, Pat. Hi there. Thank you for my, taking my call. You're welcome. Uh, Lisa, I have a question about hostas. Uh, I, all of mine, I have about 20 different varieties and, and um, out and back. And uh, it seems like the center of them has, has not um, uh, come to life, but all like the babies all around the outside are, are starting, you know, out of the ground. What's uh, going on with them? Have you heard anything else about anyone else? Uh, experiencing this no we sometimes see that phenomenon on like um, like bee balm or Monarda sometimes flocks will do that where the center of the plant will kind of die out a little bit but as the plant is spreading um, it, you know the it, the the size of the clump gets bigger it sure. sounds like what I would do if I were you is um, after they're done flowering, dig them up and divide them and then spread them around. So they might okay. just be getting a little overgrown in the center. Ah, okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you much. You're welcome. You're welcome. I got the same thing with a couple of my hostas. So. Yeah, mine I haven't done that yet, but they haven't been in that long. Yeah. All right, Bob, go ahead. Yes, thanks for taking the call. I bought three clematis this spring and planted them, and I bitter freeze it the other, about a week ago. I covered them with a blanket, but the top of one of them has turned black. Okay. Should I cut that off or should I leave it will it come back? No, you should go ahead and clip that off, especially if it's kind of black and shriveled. So just prune that back to healthy tissue. You just had some cold damage. Okay, let's go, let's go to Lev Lev Levon from Madison. Hi, Levon. Hi, Lisa. Hey, I got a question for you on your burning bush. I know last year you said something about the burning bushes had too much water where they weren't leaping out all the way like they're mm -hmm. supposed to. Will that come back this year, or do you have to cut that back? If you had a burning bush, and it is what they started doing by the end of the summer, where they were showing a lot of new growth coming from the base. So anything that didn't leaf out last summer, then yes, you want to cut that back. That will help spur anything that's going to come from the roots. It seems like we had a lot of top die back on burning bush, but that they weren't necessarily killed outright. Okay, so it wasn't so bad of a winter, so maybe they'll be better yeah, this year. Yeah, prune, prune out the stuff that's dead. All right, we're out of time. Thank you all for calling in, Lisa. Thank you for your time. Yep. We'll see you soon. You guys have a great... You, you too. Here's Hattie. One final check your forecast. And I've been watching the polar bears play in the pool this lunch hour. Maybe they're the only ones not so excited about our warm-up coming this way this week. Of course, they always walk out of the shot when I take that shot on the air, but they've been swimming already this lunch hour. We're looking at temperatures climbing into the low 50s this afternoon with a light west wind, mainly 5 to 10 miles per hour. Again, keep in mind, we've had lots of plant questions over the next couple of nights. Tonight and Tuesday night, there will be the potential for some frosty conditions across southern Wisconsin. Starting on Wednesday, though, we start to warm up and it finally feels more like May. It's about time. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock in the meantime. Have a safe afternoon.